Hello, hello, and welcome to this Emily Arc tutorial. I'm Mike Lee, and today we're going to walk through modeling complex geometry in SketchUp. This is what we'll be making. It's a kind of curved tetrahedron object. You may recognize it from chemistry class as a tetrachloride model or something very similar. But anyway, it should serve as a good case study, uh, as it does have compound curves. So that's a surface that curves in more than one direction. And it doesn't obviously conform to the Cartesian grid of the xyz axis. Uh, so it can be a little difficult to move things around. One unique thing about this object is that it's three-dimensionally symmetrical, meaning that we can recognize that one unit is the same as all the units. So if we orient them a certain way, then we can just model one unit. And the rest of the object will be filled in simultaneously. So a simple trick and good rule of thumb is to first simplify the object. And by dumbing down the shapes, we can begin to define a logic uh, that will inform our modeling process. So let's get started. Now I'm sure there's a mathematical way to construct a tetrahedron, but I suck at math. So I tend to model things with my super archy spatial spidey sense. Meaning, I just make a jig and extract what I need from it. It's like a dumb way of modeling, really. So, let's just get rid of this guy. Delete. See you later. R, keyboard shortcut R for the rectangle tool, and we'll just input some dimensions. Alright, P to push, and just push it up by the same dimension. Got a cube. Now we're going to draw some intersecting lines on this cube, and that will um, create, you know, we can use that to extract a tetrahedron object. Just stay with me. L for line, and we'll draw from corner to corner on each of the six sides of the cube. Now for this tutorial, I'm, you know, I'm assuming that you can navigate SketchUp pretty competently, so we're not going to go over like orbit or, or a pan, select, deselect undo, redo. I think you can figure that out on your own. You know, this is much more, uh, a little bit more conceptual. How do you get an object? How, how, how would you go about making forms that aren't, aren't obvious? All right, so what, now, what we're going to do now is uh, trim the fat. Get rid of this corner. E to erase, by the way. Get rid of that corner. Get rid of that corner. What's this? We don't need this. Oh, here we go. This one. All right, and there you go. We got a perfect tetrahedron object. It's a four-sided object created by uh, equilateral triangles. You can see that the length of each edge is indeed the same. So this will be our base. We're going to copy this, this space by hitting Control c Control v to paste, and by triple clicking, clicking, we're going to select this object. That's everything that sticks to it. Um, right click and make it a group. By making it a group, you know, it just keeps everything organized and it'll stick to each other. And we'll do the same over here. Uh, one quick tip um, I like to use a rectangle or a, a cube to as a tool to kind of help me control some objects. Um, so R for rectangle tool, P to push, just like we did before. Select it all by triple clicking, right click, and group. And then uh, we'll grab this. See, I want to rotate this to be flat, so when I model it, you know, it's it's I don't have to worry about these weird angles. And it can be difficult to rotate anything that's not 90 degrees. So I'm going to move this and snap it over to my cube and use the faces on the cube as guides for rotating my, my object. Okay, 
I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees just because that seems comfortable to me. M to move, Q to rotate. Can we just move this over here? Right click, and we're going to explode it. By exploding it, uh, it, it isn't a group anymore. Then we'll just create a component by hitting G. All right, and you'll see the difference between a component and a group in a little bit. I'll explain it to you. But first, we're going to copy this component and recompose this object out of this component. So Control C, copy, Control V to paste, M to move, move it into place, Q to rotate. You want it to highlight blue, so you rotate along this, uh, this axis. And we're going to have trouble rotating it um, perfectly. Uh, the way we need it to. So we need a plane here as a guide to help us rotate this triangle down. So L, and we'll make just a simple plane that will be perpendicular to, to this guy. And see, it'll help us rotate it perfectly. Select all that and delete it. We don't need it anymore. All right, so now I want to move this plane out so I can work on it but I'm having trouble selecting it. Um, that's easily fixed. If you just use the a box selection uh, by clicking, holding, and dragging to the left, it will select everything that intersects that selection box. Shift select what you don't want. So we have our triangle now, M to move, and we'll move it to a location that we can uh, more easily work on. All right. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, Q to rotate. Rotate by 180 degrees, M to move, and put it in place. Copy these guys, Control C, paste by Control V, and we could rotate it 180 and then 180, or whatever to get it, um, to get it, you know, in the right position. But that will take another jig. It's much easier and faster just to use the scale tool to invert this. Uh, composition here. So S for the scale tool, grab this control point and we'll scale it by a factor of negative one to invert that composition. Okay, and then we'll just simply Q to rotate by 90 degrees. M to move it into position and voila! You have recomposed your object, okay, and made it out of this component. Now the value in that is that if we go to this component and we edit it, it edits all of its brother and sister components uh, simultaneously. So it's actually, we're doing a quarter of the work to model this, this object. So that's great. Not only that, but it reduces file size. All right, so now we need to convert this tetrahedron object to a sphere, okay? And the easiest, well, the best way, the cleanest way to do that is to create domes on each face, and together the domes will create a sphere. That way we know our geometry is right, okay? So what we'll do is we'll double-click into this component, all right? And we need to make the, profile, the footprint of our dome on the face of this triangle. So we need to find the center point of the triangle. We do that by hitting L and drawing from this corner to the midpoint of this edge, midpoint of this edge to this corner, and we have found our center point. So to create a circle, hit the keyboard shortcut C and go from the center point here, pull it out to pull your radius out to the edge and click to finish the circle. Erase what you don't want. All right, and what we really need to make this dome is this section right here. Okay, so like a third of the of the arc here. So we're going to copy this section, Control C, Control V to paste, and we're going to make that a group just so it doesn't stick to anything. And we're going to hit M to move and move that group over to our cube just so it's. Um, easily maneuverable. And I also snapped the center point to the corner of the cube, so I, I, I know uh, where exactly I'm editing this 
this arc here, this curve. So this curve is essentially going to be the profile of our dome. And to construct our dome, we're going to make essentially dome slices from this arc, and then copy and paste those slices together to create our dome. So control C to copy, control V to paste, M to move. We'll move it right on top and we'll rotate by Q to rotate by 15 degrees. And the reason we rotate by 15 degrees is because by default the circle tool would create a circle out of, it's actually created out of 24 straight lines. And so 360 degrees divided by 24 is, I think, 15. I don't know, I'm not good at math, so I think that's right. So we'll select both of these and explode because we want them to stick, each, stick to each other. L for our line tool, and we'll just draw in some lines here, and that'll give us some faces to work with. And it'll make our dome slices. All right, erase what we don't want by hitting E. Great. We'll just triple click that, right click. Well, triple click that, and we'll just make it a, a component by hitting G. Create. Sure. Copy that. Control C, paste, Control V. M to move. We're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. M to move. And you're starting to see what we're going for here. If I triple click into one of these components, and I then edit that component, Control C, Control V, rotate by 15 degrees, M to move, move into place. Look at that. We just we just did this one, but we actually did, you know, we did twice the moves. So we'll keep doing that. Repeat. Triple click everything. Control C, Control V, Q to rotate. Uh, 30 degrees this time. M to move. Move it into place. Make sure it snaps. Might take a little effort. Okay. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Q to rotate. Rotate by. 30 degrees, M to move it into place. Alright, now we'll fix our normals by right clicking one of our white faces and orient face. The same to the other side, orient face. Alright, so we know all our normals are facing the right direction. Okay, so we have our dome. We can get out of that and select all of those, com both of those components, right click and explode, because we got what we need now. And we're going to make that a group so it doesn't stick to anything. Now let's rotate this by 90 degrees. Q to rotate, input 90, and M to move, and we'll move it over here to put it on our face. Snap. Come on, buddy. Snap. All right. And oh no, what happened? It doesn't. It doesn't fit. Ah. But it's not really supposed to fit. What we can do now is use our scale tool by hitting S. Grab this control point and hold on to Shift to scale it proportionally. And we'll scale it all the way to the, this end point here. Let go. M to move, and when we move this up, you'll see that we now have the proper size dome. All right, and now you can see that our sphere is starting to take shape. What we need to do now is get rid of these pointy ends and make our little spokes that come out, right? And the best way to do that is not with this independent one, this independent component here, but actually within the group, because we're going to need to draw geometry from uh, the other components. So, double click into one of your components, 
E to erase the parts we don't want. And we're going to do, we're going to hit L for the line tool to draw a face that connects all of the domes here. Okay. Now what we just did is we created a tangent line, or a tangent face rather, to the sphere, which will also be perpendicular to the angle at which the spoke will be attached to the sphere. So the spoke thing is going to be circular, so we have to create our profile for that. And in order to do that, we should find the center point of this face. So L for line tool, draw a line from the midpoint of this edge here to corner, midpoint of this edge to a corner, and we have our center point. C for circle, start in the middle, pull your radius out, click to finish. E to erase what we don't really want. Okay. Now, what we want to do here is we want to create a profile like we did on our dome. And the profile for this is going to come out like that. Something like that, right? And so we need to draw a line that is perpendicular to this face. But that's a little difficult to do if you know if you try it. You don't really you don't really have much control of where you're going to where this line is going to go, go outside of you know, the red, green, and blue axes, which aren't the correct way you want to go. There's an easy fix to this, and that is to align the axes. But you need something to align it to. So I'm going to hit R for rectangle. Create a little face there with the 90, 90 degree uh, lines that we want. Select that face, right click, and, and right click. <laughs> Right click and align axes, and that should give us what we need. Erase what we don't want. Okay. So from here, uh, we're going to make that arc. We're going to first make an arc like this, and then another arc like this that will connect to our sphere. And we could draw that arc out, or we could just pull it from the circle here. So I'm just going to draw a line. L to draw the line, select this piece of the pie, control C to copy. Alright. And control V to paste. I make that a group so it's not sticky. Q to rotate and rotate by 90 degrees. M is moving to place. All right, and in order for our spoke to have a thickness, what we want to do is pull this, this edge away from the center point uh, that we're going to rotate around. So we're just going to make a circle here, and a half inch looks good. We're going to make sure that our arc is selected. Hit S for the scale tool and hold Shift and snap it to this end point here. M to move, move it back into place. And there we go. We just scaled it proportionally uh, to stay away from to stay away from this center here. Now we'll just scale by two because I want to make it a little taller than it is wide. So you know it's kind of like a parabola. We'll just scale that by a factor of two. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Scale this by negative 0.5. Now we have to make our circle that's going to go on top. So C, center point, pull it out to our radius. But you see I'm having trouble snapping to this, this center point. So what we can do is we can go in the direction we want, which is the green axis. Is it the green axis? Yeah. And then hold shift, and that will hold the axis we want. And Snap it to this end point here. All right, now this circle's a little too small. Maybe I'll double it. Scale 
Hold shift to, to scale proportionally. We'll scale by a factor of two. Make that a group. Make that a group so it doesn't stick to anything. Good. M to move. And place that on the center point. Along the blue axis to where it meets up with this arc. All right. We'll grab all three of these groups that we're using to make this profile and create a component out of them. Either right click and make component or just hit the keyboard shortcut G. Now we're double double click into that component, explode these groups so they stick together. All right, now we're going to delete what we don't want. And we only need half of this circle, so I'm going to get my line tool, L, cut it in half, get rid of that. All right. Now we're going to double click everything, or triple click to select everything, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, Q to rotate and rotate 15 degrees again. This is basically what we did for the dome, right? And then M to move and move it into place. E to erase what we don't really want. All right. Now again, this is our pie slice, and we're just going to copy this and rotate it around just like we did for the dome. After we make these faces. Now, you're going to have to be a little vigilant because um, this the lines that we're making are pretty close to the angle of one of the axes. So SketchUp is going to want to snap this, see, to the red axis. But you really want to be vigilant and make sure it's snapping to the endpoint that you, you really want. And it'll give you a clue when, uh, when it turns green. See that little, little circle on the end? turns green when it's on the right spot. So I'm just going to go through this here. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Sweet, one slice of our pie. Okay, now we're going to escape out of that component. Select that component, Control C to oh, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, Q to rotate, rotate. We're going to rotate 120 degrees this time. M to move, just because I want you know there's three domes here, so I want them to line up. I want the three components to line up with the three domes in case you know I don't explode it later on. So we're going to control C to copy, control V to paste, Q to rotate by 120 degrees, M to move, and move that into place. All right, and then go into one of the components, select all, control C to copy, control V to paste, rotate by uh, 15 degrees to make our, to rotate our slice. Actually, I want to rotate the other one. Triple click to select all, control C to copy, control V to paste. Q to rotate by 30 degrees because 15 plus 15 is 30. I can do that now. Okay, triple click again to select all, control C to copy, control V to paste, Q to rotate, rotate by 60 degrees. And to move. Uh oh, where'd it go? There you are. 
Okay. So it can be a little confusing with all these components everywhere. All right. Now, if you want to change this from blue to white, you know, orient the normals correctly, just reverse faces and orient faces. There you go. So we'll escape out of all of that, and wow, we almost have it. All we need to do is fill in, see, fill in these gaps here. So we'll go into one of our components, L for our line tool, and we'll just trace these edges here. We're almost done. Okay, make some faces. These are happy faces. So happy to be a part of this uh, weird object. All right, right click. Orient faces, okay, so all our normals are lined up, and voila, there you go, there is your object. And you can see, you know, you can see that the geometry is, you know, relatively clean, all right, cleaner than some of the stuff you'll find on the, the uh, SketchUp warehouse. All right, so there you have it. You probably probably never really have to model this particular object, but uh, I hope it worked as a vehicle for explaining some SketchUp techniques outside of the obvious, you know. Um, and if you want to check out more toots or just see what else I've got cooking, check out mleark.com. That's m l -E, e a r c dot com. Hey, remember that turnaround animation you saw in the beginning of this tutorial? Well, if you want to learn how I made it, you're going to want to check out the website a week from today, because that's when I'll be uploading a step-by-step -step tutorial showing you how to set up an animation in SketchUp, how to render that animation in Kirkathea, and how to compile those frames into a video sequence using Adobe Premiere Pro. And just in case you don't have Adobe Premiere, I also included an open source alternative method using Blender. So if you want to know how to make a rendered animation using all free software, I'll be seeing you next week at emlyarc.com.